So it's interesting to have an oscillator, um, absolutely. Um, but in particular, oscillators create uh, waves, right? Waves that travel, just like waves on the surface of the ocean. Um, yeah, so uh, here is a situation where you can have waves on the surface of some water. So here's the idea. I've got an oscillator. Here it is, right? And this oscillator, right, is a mass on the end of a spring. And I'm gonna, and then also, um, in this uh, example, I have some water, right? And so you can see that the oscillator is, has this like massive ball actually kind of um, immersed partially into the surface of the water. And now if you look at the water, the water is totally flat. There is no disturbance of the water yet. And the water is at equilibrium, we'd say that the water was really quiet. And then let's imagine that a person reaches up and pushes on the bottom of the ball with a force and causes it to displace upwards as well, right? So like in the last video, this is an external agent adding energy to the oscillator. And when this happens, and the person lets go, right? Then what's gonna happen is the oscillator is gonna go up and down, right? It goes up and down at the surface of the water. And what happens is really interesting. This uh, oscillator just makes disturbances on the surface of the water, and those disturbances travel outward. So in particular, they travel outward with a wave speed, and I'm gonna denote speed by that V, like V for velocity. And the height of these water waves is the amplitude of the waves. So the oscillator can have an amplitude, but also the waves can have an amplitude. And in the case of these surface waves, it's just how high is the wave above the equilibrium undisturbed height, right? So that's the amplitude. And you can see that in this particular case, this oscillator was shaking up and down. It must have been shaking up and down really wildly at the beginning. It had a bunch of energy, so the oscillator's amplitude was high, and it created these really tall waves at the beginning, right? This is the first wave that was created, and then the the next peak of wave is behind it, and it's a little bit shorter, and then this one's a little bit even smaller, and then smaller. Can you see that the amplitude is shrinking away? But that makes sense because our oscillator is losing energy because that energy is being taken away by the wave, right? The wave is traveling outward. It's delivering energy away from the oscillator. So as the oscillator loses energy, its amplitude is gonna decrease, and so the amplitude of the waves that it is creating also decreases. So there are some special uh, qualities of a wave. There is the amplitude of the wave. That's how far away from equilibrium the wave's height is or shape is. There is the wave's velocity it's how fast the wave moves away from the oscillator that created it, right? That's the velocity. There is an idea of wavelength, and the wavelength is just the distance between two adjacent crests or troughs, right? So you can measure from here to here, or you can measure from here to here. Right? This is also the same wavelength. Um, in this particular case, oh, um, also uh, frequency. Let me, let me describe frequency. Frequency is how often peaks travel past a fixed position. So here, 
is a fixed position somewhere out, right? And right now, this part of the, the wave is traveling past, and the frequency is how often, or it's, it's essentially uh, the one divided by the amount of time you have to wait between when this peak is at the fixed location until this peak goes past the fixed location, right? Because it's going to travel over. So you have to wait a little bit of time before this part of the wave gets there, right? And if you take, that's, that's called the period, and then one divided by the period is the frequency of the wave. Another way to say that is just how often peaks travel past a fixed position. So one last uh, descriptor of, of this wave in particular, this water, surface water wave, is that it's transverse, right? This transverse wave, its amplitude is oscillating, right? So the wave is uh, a shape on the water that's up and down, and this up-down amplitude is transverse or perpendicular to the way that the wave is traveling, right? So this is the travel direction of the wave is towards the right, but the wave itself is an amplitude that's up and down. So that's called transverse. So these surface water waves are transverse waves. And these transverse waves are probably the waves that you um, are sort of the most ready to see. But there is a different kind of wave called a longitudinal. And a longitudinal wave, for example, is a sound wave. Sound waves are longitudinal. And what you're going to see is that the amplitude is in the same direction as the velocity, right? Is the same direction as, as which the uh, wave is traveling. So that's kind of weird. But you'll, you'll see it. We'll talk about it in, in the video after this one. Okay, so um, this is important. Waves, what they do is they carry energy. And in particular, these waves are going to carry energy away from the oscillator that created them. Right? But you could imagine, like, this is pretty neat to wonder, like, what if there's actually an oscillator out here that also has a spring attached to it, right? And it's not got any energy, but this, this wave that's coming towards it, it's going to push and pull on our oscillator. And what it can do is it's actually going to add energy to this oscillator. So this oscillator can take energy from the wave that's passing by it, right? Yeah, so that's pretty interesting. It can be a situation of resonance, for example. So let me put that word. And I'll put a question mark. So yeah, resonance. All right. So um, yeah, waves, they carry energy. The way that a wave, in this case, the water wave is carrying energy, is the fact that there is water and it is moving, right? In this case, it's moving up and down, right? So that, right, water is massive, and if it has a motion, then there is kinetic energy associated with it. But also, the fact that the water level itself is disturbed, that is, we're talking about potential energy, right? So this is the sense in which the wave has energy, and the sense in which it's carrying it or delivering energy is if you just look at the picture, right? There's a bunch of energy stored up in the wave right here, but if you look right over here, there's no energy over there yet because the wave hasn't gotten there yet, right? You see it's all undisturbed over here. So we're waiting for the disturbance that's here to get to here. That's the sense in which energy is moving and the wave is delivering the energy. Okay. Um, yeah, so some other notes. Water is removing energy from the oscillator. So our oscillator's amplitude is shrinking as time goes on, right? Because energy is being taken away from the oscillator. 
Um, so the oscillator is, uh, sorry, the water is taking energy from the oscillator and the sort of like other way of saying that is that the oscillator is adding energy to the water in the form of these traveling waves. And another like th thing that's important is that the wave's frequency and the oscillator's frequency, they are equal, they match. So the last detail that I wanna put in this little video is a description of the relationship between what's called the wave speed, I've been using the little symbol V for the velocity, the wavelength of the wave and the frequency of the wave. There's a really simple relationship. It's that the wave speed equals the wavelength times the frequency. So here's an example. Let's say that this right here is the oscillator period right? And this right here is how fast waves travel on the water, right? Roughly three meters a second. It's kind of slow, but um, yeah, let, let's use this as our working example. So if I know the wave speed and I know the period, right, the period, then what is the wavelength, right? What is the value of the wavelength? So I'm going to use this relationship that I have here. So the relationship says that the velocity equals the wavelength times the frequency. But the frequency is just one divided by the period. Right? So the wavelength which is the unknown, which is the thing we want to know, it must be that the velocity is three meters per second. So I'll put that here. And the P, so the wavelength is here. Whoops. So I divide by the period, right? That's what multiplying by the inverse of the period means. So wavelength, whoops. And then I divide by, right, what was the period? It was one half of a second. So can you see that the wavelength must be equal to 1.5 meters. So make sure that you know how to get to this um, answer here. And if you can, then that means that you have a really good handle, for example, on how to use a lot of these terms. Um, that I've introduced, period, frequency, wavelength, and, sp and wave speed. Okay.